Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Photo V2 and I'm gonna show you how you can put together this book cover where you can see we blended a few different images together just to make it look that little bit more creative. If this is something that you would like to learn, then let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we want to do when creating a book design is just deciding what size cover we would like to create. So just to be a little bit quicker with this video, I'm gonna go ahead and create a five inch by an eight inch book cover. However, you guys are free to head over to Google and just search up the most popular book sizes and maybe find something you'd rather work with. However, if you do wanna copy me in today's tutorial, then just go ahead and double tap inside of here or just select all of your text and just change that page width to five inches and that page height to eight inches. And if you find that you're in points or pixels, just head over to the document units and go ahead and change that over to inches as for the DPI, I have this at 300 as standard as that is going to be the industry standard when it comes to printing and that will give you the best quality. And if you do decide that you want to print your book cover, then what is important is to go into your color option right here. And inside of here, you want to go ahead and change your color format from RGB over to CMYK. And without getting too technical about all of this, all you really need to remember is if you ever want to print your designs, then just make sure that your color format is in CMYK. However, if you are just designing for web or device, then go ahead and change that to RGB. However, in this tutorial, because it could be a possibility that I may want to print this later on, I'm gonna go ahead and just change that to CMYK. And then with everything else set up the way we want it with our page width and height, and of course our DPI being at 300 if you do want to print that. All we need to do next is head over to the bottom right hand corner and go ahead and create our document. So here we are inside of Affinity Photo V2's interface. And as you can see, we have our blank canvas where we can begin creating our book cover. So when it comes to creating a book cover, it really is quite a straightforward and simple process. It can take as little as five minutes depending on how creative you want to be. In most cases, it really is just a case of adding a couple of images and some text. The most important thing being is that you make sure you have the right size for your book cover. Then from there, it really is quite straightforward. So to get started, I'm just gonna bring in a few images. And the way I'm gonna do that in today's tutorial is I'm gonna use a stock library. So I'm gonna head over to the right hand side over here to where I have the stock option. If you guys aren't seeing your stock option here on your right hand side layers panel, all you've got to do is head up to the top menu bar to where it says window, head down towards the bottom of our menu to where you'll see the stock option. Once you check that, you will also have access to this stock library. So going back over to the stock library, we have a couple of different websites that we can use inside of here. I'll stick with Pixabay for the moment and see what I can find. So the first image I'm going to use is I want to be able to use a subject, whether that is a man or a woman. And for this tutorial, I think I'm just gonna search for a girl and just see what we can find inside of here. So as you can see, we have thousands of different options when it comes to choosing an image for our book cover. And you can use these however you like as they are royalty free. It is recommended that you do give written credit to the artist that may have created the image that you are using. And you can simply find their name by hovering over any of these images and just jotting that down for whichever image that you use. So moving on, the image I'm gonna use for this tutorial is gonna be this one right here of this girl, as I'm gonna create a kind of horror book cover. So I'll go ahead and select that one and just drop that on top of my canvas. And once we drop that in, you can also notice that we do normally get a name up here as well of the artist that created this. However, as we have a bunch of numbers here, I really wouldn't worry about giving any written credit to that. But in most cases, you will find the name of the artist right there where those numbers are. So moving on, what I'm gonna do next is position this to be roughly where I want it to go on my cover. So I'll head over to the left-hand side toolbar menu and I'm gonna select my move tool. I'm just gonna to start to drag this around a little bit and kind of place that roughly where I want it to go. So I do want my subject to fill pretty much all of the cover apart from, I just want to make her a little bit bigger, I think. So I'm just going to start dragging this down a little bit towards the bottom and position that roughly where I want it. And that is looking okay. And I just need to adjust the top here. So I'm going to hit Command or Control minus just to zoom out a little bit. 
and I'm just gonna pull up this corner right there just to make that fit to the size of the cover and I'll drag her over slightly just bringing in a little bit more of her eye and then I'm quite happy with the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do next is just make sure this fits to screen so you guys can see it a little bit better and you can do that with Command or Control Zero. So moving on, what I'm gonna do next is find myself another image which I am going to kind of blend in with this one just to give it a bit of an artistic look. So if we head back over to our stock image and this time around I'm gonna search for a house and see what we can find inside of here. So I'm gonna look for something black and white, I think, because it always gives it a more dramatic effect. And in most cases, it looks a little bit more scarier. So right there, I can see one. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this one in and drop that on top of my canvas as well. And just like before, we just wanna resize this image just to fit our canvas a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command or Control minus just to zoom out so we can get to each point of the corners. But before I go ahead and resize that, what I do want to do is just move a couple of these layers around. So if we head back over to the right hand side and we swap from being in our stop menu over to our layers and the house here, I want to drag below our subject. Then just for a moment, as we come to position the layer underneath it, I want to drop the opacity on our subject so we can kind of see through her. So choosing our opacity option right here, if we just pull this down a little bit so we can see through her face, that's gonna make it a little bit easier just to position our image in the background. So I hit Command or Control Zero again just to fit to screen. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select the image underneath it, which is our house, and I'm gonna move it around just a little bit. And of course, this is still too big, so I'll go ahead and just shrink that down a little bit and just pull that up. And I'm gonna roughly put this to where I think it may look pretty good. So I'm gonna position that window kind of in the center of her forehead right there maybe just a little bit smaller and put it roughly there. That should be fine. Then I'm gonna go ahead and bring the opacity back up on my girl. So back up to the opacity, change that from 71 back to 100. Then what we're gonna do from here is start blending these two images together. And the way that we would do that is by using a mask. So with our girl selected, we're gonna head down towards the bottom of our layers panel where we have this option right here which says mask layer. So once we select that, all we want to do is choose the option here that says mask. And now you can see next to our girl in the layers, we have this new option right there which is going to be our mask and we want to make sure that we have selected that when we come to draw on that. So for any of you guys who are new to using masks or don't quite know how they work, what this is used for is to either hide or reveal what is underneath the current layer. So the way we would do that is heading over to the left hand side toolbar menu and we're going to select our paintbrush tool. Then with that selected, you can see that we have a few different options on the top menu bar where it says opacity, flow and hardness. And we'll talk a little bit more about the hardness and the flow in just a moment. But for now, I wanna change the opacity from 20% being all the way up to 100, just while I'll quickly demonstrate how this tool works. Then I'm gonna head over to the right hand side toolbar menus and I'm gonna make sure that I do have the mask selected just by double checking that you do have that blue border around your mask. Then if you just hover over your image of the girl, you can start to see the layer underneath her come through her just like that. So if we just start tapping on our mouse and just painting that in, that generally is how you start blending images together. And the way that this works is by using two different colors. We're going to use black if you want to be able to show the layer underneath it. So at the moment we are on the color black, so I can start painting over her. However, if you decide that you want to start bringing the image of the girl back, then what you need to do is change from the color black over to the color white, and then you can just start painting back over that, and then that will bring the image all the way back to where we began. So in a nutshell, white is going to be used to conceal what is underneath the layer, whereas black is going to be used to reveal what is underneath our current layer. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Command or Control Z just to undo that and take that back to the beginning so we can get started. And now we'll quickly just talk about these different settings here. Starting off with our opacity, I always recommend having this around 30% or anywhere in the lower range as when you come to start painting, you can always just paint over the same area several times to start revealing the image a little bit clearer. 
Then as for the flow, that's kind of like using a can of spray paint. The lower the flow is, the less paint's going to come out. And the higher that is, the more it's gonna come out. So if I bring that down to 10% and I just paint here, we can't really see that very clearly. Whereas if I go ahead and put it up to 100 and paint right beside that, you can see that is a lot more clearer than that one is right there. In a way, it's kind of like using the opacity as well. And just like the opacity, I also like to keep that fairly low. So I'm gonna put that roughly back to where it was around 32%. And finally for the hardness, that really is just gonna determine whether you want a hard edge or a soft edge. So at the moment with it being on 20%, if we paint this in, we can see it's quite soft around the edge of that. And if we go ahead and change that all the way to 100, and then we paint that in, that's gonna be a bit harsher around it. And if I just go ahead and zoom in, you can generally see that circle around the edge whereas the others it blends in nicely. And with the hardness, I do recommend you just keep that in the lower range as it's always gonna look better if it's a softer brush. However, in some cases you are gonna swap and change this in order to paint in certain areas just to make it a little bit easier. And we'll do that as we go along with the tutorial. Okay, so moving on, I'm just gonna hit Command or Control Zero just to get us back to the beginning of this before we start to painting. So to begin, I do wanna change my opacity to be a little bit higher. I'm gonna take that roughly around 90%. That is because I wanna start painting around the outside of her face for the moment. And what I wanna do first of all is make my brush a little bit smaller. And the way you resize your brush is with your left or right bracket keys. So I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller while I get the outside of her face. I'm just gonna start painting around here. Get as close as you can. It really doesn't matter if you mess up as we can always change the color to being white and just bring the image back. So I'll go ahead and just start painting in all of this and just keep adjusting the size of your brush and making your way around the image. And I'm gonna start removing the arm here or a hand and I'm gonna keep some of her neck in there and I'm gonna blend that in a little bit better in just a moment. Just gonna try and take out the other areas that I know I definitely wanna get rid of. So it's something like that. I'm gonna remove some of her hair as well and we'll blend that a little bit better in just a moment using the softer brush or the opacity. And I'll do just the same up there and just take out that corner as well, just making that look better. And I think I just wanna move a little bit down here as well, just to reveal a bit of the background. So I'll go ahead and just paint some of that in as well. And I'll come back with a softer brush in just a moment. So back up to our opacity, we'll go ahead and bring that back down to around 30%. And then we'll just start making this a little bit softer around the edges just to blend that a little bit better, just like that. And then we're gonna get closer to this neck just so it looks so much better when you come to blend with the opacity. And this is gonna be a lot of trial and error, just going back and forth, just making sure you got as close as you can and you are happy with the effect that you've got. So I'm happy with this for the moment. So what I'm gonna do now is start bringing in some of the detail into her face. So I make myself a bigger brush with my left and right bracket keys, and I'll just start painting this in. So I'm gonna roughly do this area here and just under her eye there, and a little bit down here as well. Underneath her chin, getting a smaller brush, and just making my way up there. And I'll reveal just a little bit more here under her eye as well and just blend those together. And I'll just bring in a little bit more detail just up here. I don't like it on the hair there, so I am gonna go ahead and switch that over to white. And I'll just get rid of that section right there and bring that hair back in. And you can see because we've got a lower opacity, we do have to go over this several times just to blend that back out. However, if you do put your opacity all the way back up to 100, then that should really be a case of just going over that once. So at the moment, this doesn't look too great because her face kind of stands out a little bit too much with the black and white background. So what I am gonna do is go ahead and change her to be black and white as well. So the way we're gonna do that is head over to our right-hand side layers panel, go down towards the bottom to where we have our adjustments. Inside of here, we are going to choose a black and white option. Then I want that to be a little bit darker than what we've got. So I'm gonna go down here to where it says blend mode. I'm gonna go ahead and change that maybe to a hard light. So something more like that is what I'm going for. And what I wanna do next is, I think I wanna move this background image a little bit just to reveal a little bit more of the house in the background. So the way that we would do that is going back to our layers, selecting that background image, and we'll grab our move tool. Then we'll go ahead and just resize that a little bit and then just move that into place. So I'm gonna bring that back up 
and just pull that over a little bit so I'll find a better image. So somewhere around there and just a little bit further down because I kind of like this tower here so I want that in the view as well. And I'm going to bring that down just a little bit more. I'm going to try and get the point of that tower as well in the image. So I think something around there looks better. I'm not too worried about this area up here as I do want to bring in a third image in a moment for the background. I really kind of just want this house to be inside of a face. And with that said, I think we should actually mask that off right now. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to head back over to the left hand side and I want to grab my pen tool, which you will find just down here towards the bottom. And with the pen tool, all you got to do is simply tap to create a point and just start making your way around the face. And you can simply just select that, hold onto your mouse and start to curve that. This doesn't have to be perfect, just get as close as you can. So I'm going to keep making my way around her face, just curving that in areas that may need to have a little curve. So I'm going to come down there and just make your way around the areas that you want to make sure this image is going to stay inside of and just keep going all the way around till you finish that. So as you can see, I drew around the outside of her face and what I'm gonna do now is use this as a clipping mask. So if we look over on the right hand side layers panel, we've just created our curve right here and we're gonna drag our background inside of that curve by simply dragging that and just dropping that on top of it. And then we'll just find another image just to put in our background to make this look a little bit better because at the moment it doesn't look too good at all. So going back over to our stop menu, I'm going to search for a different background. I'm going to go for grave and see what I can find inside of there. See if we can find something that's going to look pretty good. So I have a quick look down here and that one right there should do perfectly fine. Just going to drag that on top of it and let it go. Then in the layers, I'm going to make sure this is all the way at the bottom. And already this is looking pretty good. We've got to go ahead and just paint back in some areas here just to get rid of the image in the background there. But for now, I want to resize the grave in the background. So I'm just going to hit Command or Control Zero just to zoom out. And then I can just grab those corners by grabbing my Move tool and just resizing that grave image and then roughly moving that to where I want to put it. I want to be able to see a grave in the background of the image. So one right there. That don't look too bad, but it really is a case of just having a little mess around and seeing the kind of image and effect that you would like in the background. I think I'm going to leave it roughly like that. Then I'll just fit to screen once again with Command or Control Zero so you guys can see it's a little bit better. I'm going to go back onto my mask so we can go and fix a few of these areas that look a little bit rubbish. So with our mask selected, we'll go ahead and grab our paintbrush tool once again. And we'll choose a lower opacity back down to around 30% once again. And we'll just come in and we'll make sure that we are painting the area back in. So if we want to paint it back in, we want to make sure that we are on white. And then we're just going to go over the area here just to make sure that we are getting our hair back in originally. If you do find you have to go over it too many times, just bring your opacity back up again all the way to 100 and just start painting your areas back in. And then just a bit down here under the chin, so I'll go over there, just where it didn't quite mask inside of my clipping mask. And just tidy up any areas that you don't like. And now I'm just going to switch back over to a lower opacity as I bring a bit more of that neck back in, just to make it blend that a little bit better. Just go for a smaller brush with my bracket keys and just start painting that in a little bit, just so it kind of blends better with that background. Just like that. And it really is a case of just switching your colours on black and white just to make sure that you can kind of really make that look good. Then what I want to do next is I want to colour her lips back to being the colour red. And the way that we would do that is by simply going back up to our black and white adjustment. Making sure that we are on our paintbrush like we was originally. Make sure that you are on the colour black as you want to reveal the colour underneath that. And then it's a case of just painting over the lips. And then you can see the color starts to come back in. And at this point, you're going to have to zoom in a little bit just to get closer to the edges. So I'll go ahead and hit Command or Control plus and minus just to zoom in and out. Make my brush a little bit smaller. Bring my opacity up so I can make that a lot easier when it comes to painting this in. And I'm just going to make my way around the edges of the lips. So I did just speed up the video on this part so you don't have to sit there watching me do that. But you can see this is what we've got. It could look a little bit better if I spent a bit more time on it. But I wanted to be a bit quicker with the tutorial. 
So up to now, this is looking pretty good. I think if anything, I'll just want to drop the opacity a little bit on the girl just to make it kind of look a bit more ghostly. So going over to our layers on the right hand side, I'm going to select the girl layer. I'm just going to bring that opacity down just slightly, maybe to around 90%. And now I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So really that is the image of this done. All we've got to do now is just add the text that we want to put onto our book cover. So I'm just going to simply go over to the text tool on the left hand side. And let's drag this out and get the rough name that I'm going to use. I think for this I'm going to call it Ghosts. Then I'm going to hit Command or Control A just to select all of that so we can change the colour. And what I want to do I think is sample the colour of the lips. So I'm going to come back over to the right hand side. I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool. I'm just going to drag that over to the lips. I'm going to sample one of these reds. I'm going to go roughly for the darker red. So somewhere around that shade right there. And I'll come back up and just select that red that I just sampled. Then I'll go and grab my move tool and just resize this text a little bit. And at the moment, this is kind of come out gray. And the reason for that is it's sat underneath our black and white filter in our layers. So if we just drag that above that, then we'll get the full color of the text. So in case you didn't already know, anything that is going to be underneath your black and white filter is going to change the color to black and white. And anything you don't want to be affected, just make sure that you drag that above your black and white filter. So moving on, what we're going to do now is change the text of this to a different font. So I'll go ahead and select all of that. I'm going to go up to the fonts on the top left hand corner. I'm going to look for something that I've recently used to be a bit quicker. And I'll just see what these look like. I quite like that abandoned one right there. So I'll select that one. Then what I'm going to do with that is drag that roughly to where I want to put it which I'm going to have down the bottom here, I think. So I'll center that using the green center line right there. Then what I want to do so we can see this a little bit clearer is I want to add a drop shadow to this. So if we go back over to the right hand side layers, go down to where we have effects inside of here, we'll select outer shadow and I'm going to put this around 20 on the radius mm -hmm. and around 20 on the offset and then see what we've got. That don't look too bad. I want to be able to see the shadow a little bit clearer. So what I'm going to do is bring that intensity up on that. So it makes it a lot darker. Then that isn't looking too bad. I'm going to zoom in with command or control plus just so we can see that text a little bit better. And we'll add a few more effects to this. So I'm going to add an inner glow to that as well. And I'm going to go for a lighter red on this. So I'll go somewhere around there. And I'll just change that radius to bring that up a little bit. I'm going to drop that intensity because I kind of want it to be a little bit subtle of a different red around the outside. So I'm going to leave that the way it is and I'll zoom back out with command or control zero. And I think I'll just resize that just a little bit to roughly around there. And then what I need to do is just add a name of the author. So I'll go ahead and just put my name on here. So I just write in Matthew Ward. I'll go ahead and select that text so I can change the font. Let's go for something recent as well. That'll do perfectly fine. I want to make sure I give this color white. So I'm going to go up there and change that to white. Then I'll go and drag that roughly where I want it to go. And I'm going to resize that to look a little bit better. Roughly around that size. Just make sure that is lined up. Just like that. I'm going to move that up a little bit with my arrow keys. And that is that step finished. And finally, all I want to do is just add a little subtitle somewhere at the top here. So I'm going to make a copy of this text with command or control C and command or control V to paste. Bring that up here. It's going to change the words in here to something else. Maybe you can run, but you can't hide. I'll go ahead and select all of that. I want to give that the color white as well. I'm going to remove the effects on this one. So I'll turn that off. Make that a little bit smaller. And then just put this roughly into position, grab my move tool, bring this back to where I want it to go. I want to make sure this is centered. So I'll select all of that and center that at the top here. Then it's just a case of putting this into position, snapping that in the middle of our image and then just moving that where you want it to go. So I'm going to have that roughly around there. I'm quite happy with that. I think if anything, I just want to bring the hair back in over this side as I think it's going to look a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and select my mask again, grab my paintbrush tool and I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. And I'm going to bring my opacity all the way up to 100 if it isn't already. And I'm just going to start painting this hair back in over here. And I just got to change my color back to white so that's going to reveal the original layer. 
and I just start painting over that just to blend that in that little bit better. And I think looking at this, I don't really like the fact that I have dropped the opacity a little bit as I can see the image behind it. So I'm just gonna bring that back up again with selecting the girl and just put that opacity back to 100. And that is definitely looking better in my opinion. So that really doesn't look too bad at all. If you decide that you don't like it in black and white, all you gotta simply do is turn off your black and white filter and that will bring color to the full image, just like that. Maybe this is the kind of thing that you prefer. However, for me being a horror book, I kind of like the fact that it was black and white. It kind of looks like a little bit more scary. So that is it for today's video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you learned something new. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this and I will see you in my next video.